Kevin Hart is flying high, and so was Chris Rock and Beyonce. Saturday Night Live nailed it with a Melania moment. A third installment of Sex in the City movie, but does anyone care? A moment with blush music in NYC. A scantily clad Nicki Minaj. And October is Domestic Violence Prevention and Awareness Month, so stay tuned for our interview with domestic abuse survivor Katrina Walker. Welcome to What's the 4 in 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. I'm Kizzy Cott. I'm Onika McLean. I'm Courtney Rashawn. Yeah, so let's get a quick take on what's popping. Now, the box office numbers are in, and comedian Kevin Hart's new movie, Kevin Hart, what now? Came in number three at the movie box office. He grossed nearly $11.8 million. Good for him. Yeah, right? Good for you, Kevin. Uh-huh. I and the top five. I know. <laughs> right? <laughs> the Kevin Hart, what now debut also set a new opening weekend record for stand-up comedy movies, passing 2000s, the original Kings of Comedy. Remember that? That was, that was good. good. It was really good. Mm -hmm. And it's $11 million debut, as well as Hart's own 2013 film, Let Me Explain, which had a $10 million opening weekend. So good for him. He keeps good on. For him. Get all the money, Kevin. Get all the money. <laughs> Getting better and better. Mm -hmm. So, Nika, I know you don't want to hear this. What are we in? But <laughs> <laughs> the embattled filmmaker Nate Parker's the Birth of a Nation plummeted to number 10 in its second weekend. The slave rebellion drama declined a hefty 60% to an estimated 2.7 million for a 10 day domestic total of about 12 million. So he's embattled. Want to know why he's embattled? Here you go. Because you guys don't Preach. support him. Preach. You don't see it? Listen, you see I, it? You, I, have I have my Birth reasons. I have my reasons. I'm not going to do it. People at I home, if you want to support. Mm -hmm. But I am Honey, not going to let me tell that. you something. You have the support. I'm going to see Our it. filmmakers, mm, no, if we you do not, do. I mean, but I like how, awesome. just like we support Queen B, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Homegirl grossed $250 mm. million dollars in her formation tour. She does wow. it every time. She's, she's every amazing. time, right? She's because amazing. everybody want to hear, uh-oh, 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 but you don't want to hear about formation your, you don't want to hear about your history, right? You don't want to hear about your, whatever, Listen, whatever. anyway. <laughs> Alrighty then, well, rapper and entertainment oh, entrepreneur oh. Kanye West and his wife Kim Kardashian were spotted together in public for the first time since the Paris okay. robbery incident. Yeah. Um, although Kanye's on tour, a source told E! News recently that West is so supportive mm -hmm. of Kim and he's been by her side um, even though he's been working and calling her nonstop to check on her. So he's being the good husband. Yes, he as, as he, he was should. Should be. Yes. The exactly. insurance company's yeah, watching. Mm -hmm. oh, Lord. <laughs> After an eight year absence from doing stand up, comedian Chris Rock is going to is scheduled to take two new specials. Ooh, now get really? this, he is it's going to be on Netflix worldwide. Okay. Netflix beat out HBO because remember all his old um, specials were on HBO. HBO yeah. That's how much they're paying him. How much? Forty million dollars for two specials. So that's an hour. Wow. So he's getting twenty million dollars an hour. What's up? Oh, he has a new girlfriend. I saw him. Yeah. Really? Yeah, he has a new girlfriend. He's oh, already the divorce is her. finalized. No, but you, when you when you leave, you can like you can get a little squeeze. That's I how was you about do to it. say I'm available. Mm. Chris Rock. I'm available. <laughs> so I'm uh, and this is vintage. <laughs> These checks. <laughs> Whatever. All right. <laughs> Keep it right here. When we come back, we're bringing you more of what's popping. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything, it is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, girl. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. I've been reading Common Sense by Thomas Paine. I've got national elections on the brain. You want a revolution, I want a revelation. So how you gonna change the nation? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And when you vote for president, you get to pick who participates in the sequel. What? Vote, vote. America. Vote, vote. The time is now. Vote, vote. Decide what you want. Vote, vote. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please.
You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one and yet another installment of Melania Moments. Saturday Night Live put its own twist on Beyonce's hit song, Sorry. The video features Cicely Strong as Melania Trump, actress Emily Blunt as Ivanka Trump, Kate McKinnon as Trump's campaign manager Kellyanne Conway, Sashia Zamata as apprentice alum Amarosa, and Vanessa Bayer as Tiffany Trump. Now in the skit, Melania Trump is calling out her very own Becky with the good hair. <laughs> Instead, this time around, Becky's actually her husband, Donald Trump. <laughs> and as she put it, is some guy with the weird hair. Mm. Here's a taste of the video. You only want me when I'm not there. <laughs> with us, you wouldn't be standing there. You'd just be that guy with the weird hair. You'd just be that guy with the weird hair. <laughs> I wrote that all by myself. And as the video aptly points out, there are a lot of women, a lot of issues to discuss regarding Donald Trump's behavior towards women lately. We have more than enough. We could fill up the entire show yes. talking about all the women who are coming forward and saying, you know what? Not just locker room talk. He actually did these things. He did this to me. I think we're up to like 12 women now. I would say he was competing with Bill Cosby, but then I was <laughs> <laughs> Bill Cosby. But I'm oh saying, <laughs> why y'all not coming after him like y'all did Bill Cosby? I'm just saying, he could be the president of the United States Look, of America. Listen, Bill Cosby is a comedian. Listen, listen, I'm right. just saying. In the air, it's fight crazy. the power. That's right. right. That's right. I'm just and saying. And you need a fist. Seriously. I, I got a fist. <laughs> and I have a fist. It. But mm. Obama wouldn't be able to do that. At all. Obama couldn't do mm. that. No, 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 absolutely not. But you know, it's different protocol, different strokes for different folks sometimes. You know yeah, it no, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And I'm yeah. like, you know, if, if these things are true, and like People Magazine, for example, that woman who came forth and said, as I was doing the story, he pushed me against the wall, blah, 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 blah. There are people who said in the, when it happened 10 years ago or 11 years ago, she told them. So they're all like corroborating her story. Six people. Wow. So I'm like, um, Trump, this was still nah. hilarious. This was hilarious. No, it the was part good. about Amarosa when it says, "Just watch, guys, it's gonna be hilarious." She's like, "I'm your only black friend." That was so <laughs> hilarious. It was like. That's a now skits are getting they're so really good. good. Yeah, they're really right? good. And they're pushing the envelope, campaign. which is funny. Even funnier. Did you funnier. see the debate stuff too? The debate one where like she, Donald Trump is all behind Hillary Clinton, like lurking. <laughs> <laughs> and every time she look, he go the other way. I'm like, that was so true. He was lurking so hard. <laughs> Crazy. Alrighty yeah. then. Well, Blush Music, the new girl group from Matthew Knowles, uh, his world music world entertainment was back in New York for WBLS Radio Circle of Sisters event nice. at the Jacob Javits Center. So they performed and it was a good time. It was beautiful. We yeah. were there yes, and it was were. amazing. Yeah. It was all these women. Yeah. And then it was like pockets of guys like coming in together. And I guess Lurking. they were probably like, you know what? <laughs> the I'm going to catch are. me something. <laughs> exactly. I'm going to circle, circle, circle me some sisters. Because that's what I. But it was like so nice. We met like a whole bunch of cool yeah. people. Yeah. Shout out to Lonnie Love. We had such a good time. We had yeah. such a good time. But the guys right. were definitely fishing. They had their fish gear, their backpacks, yeah, their like, worms in oh, hand. Why are you, what you gonna to buy? Go. Sparkly t shirts <laughs> yeah. and hair? Like, why are you in here? We're just there to support. It was yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Support the sisters as they're walking by. And, and, and the fake Nicki Minaj outfits. Speaking of Nicki Minaj, <laughs> uh -huh. you guys saw her, seen her, her little black lace cat suit? Yes, I did. Mm, okay, Nikki so this is what she good. wore, but this is what she wore to the Title X 1015 concert, and people are saying, I think that she went a little too far. No. I personally think that it's just classic Nicki Minaj, and it's kind of like Little Kim when she wore that pasty. Eventually, you just got to go butt naked, no. actually. <laughs> no. You just got to come out like... No, no, but the thing is, though, net, net, that lace thing, lace is in. Lace is definitely and Not has... naked lace, because you can see her breasts. Listen, lace is in, and it's Nicki Minaj, and she's an artist. And remember, like, way, even go, way back in the day, nakedness has been in with artists forever. Like, even going back to Cher, like, the 80s, I remember, like, the yes. cutout booty, where she had her butt. Her butt yes. cheeks were out. That's true. And, and she didn't even right. have the vibe remember, that Nicki Minaj had. Remember Diana Ross <laughs> um, touched um, Little Kim's... Um, I don't remember. Am I dating myself? Oh, so we're dating Well, that's MTV. I don't remember that. That was on MTV. I, I Everyone, no, that, was, that was classic. They yeah, still I remember that. the Pacey's. I remember... With the, the purple one piece with the boob out and Diana Ross, like, touched her boob. I don't yeah. remember her it. touching the boob, but I do remember her with that outfit and stuff. So artists always push the envelope. That's what they do. Nicki Minaj, she's outgoing. She's, she's sexy. She's extroverted. She's doing her thing. I don't think it was inappropriate. So what do you guys think about... Third, um, 
Sex in the City. What do you guys think about that? I like it. Yeah, so, I like the idea. I saw the first so, two. So like Sarah that. Jessica Parker was at a um, at an interview on the Sunday morning, mm-hmm. CBS, and she kind of said that you know those ideas are on the table. So oh, okay. I mean, you never know. Hmm. But this is our our question to you guys and to you: Do you think that the millennials would be able to accept the old cast? As, yeah. as they stand now. Do you yes, have, absolutely. I do. Because I, I, I think some things are universal, I think. And, I mean, there's something about you can't actually change the people that we've known and loved for decades. Well, maybe you know what I mean? You add, can't. Add, add, I think you can add. Millennials add. into the script. You know, Samantha can have a niece. I think you can um, You know, uh, Miranda can have, you know, the children are older now. Mm-hmm. So they're like, you know, teens or preteens. So all that be incorporated into the script. I don't know if that's in the last one, exactly. which was really know, good. I don't know if I want to see... The elderly having sex. They're not dead. They're not elderly. Old. They're not like fabulous. 65. They're not I don't care. They are fabulous. They are fabulous. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, but they saw that, saw that video with the little old lady giving a man like a little fellatio. Oh, okay. What you been watching? I'll show you. I don't know what you've been watching. I have no idea what It was watching. not appealing. Not appealing. I don't care if you're, if you're in Louboutins. <laughs> if your ass is saggy, I don't want to see that shit. You are I doubt okay. if any of the cast members are going to have saggy, saggy ass. booties. They're not. Oh, maybe. Not at all. Okay. It's not. It's not ju- well, I know Sarah doesn't. But well, Samantha May. Samantha, Samantha will May. not. Because Samantha, Samantha remember, her not. character will never let exactly. herself like sag, bag, or anything else. She's a diva. She's like the quintessential cougar. She's going to put some silicone okay. in that booty. Look out, look out for Sex in the City 3 guys coming to an elderly home near you. Oh, my God. You're so terrible. It's going to be good. Uh-uh. So we know you guys are all on social media. So join us in our next segment, What's the 4 one Social, with our social media team. We'll be right back. Traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Switch to energy-saving bulbs. Saving energy saves you money. The average tax takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. At highway speeds, that's enough time to travel the length of a football field. Stop the texts. Stop the wrecks. Our photo of the week is actress and LGBT advocate Laverne Cox of Orange is the New Black leaving the restaurant catch in Los Angeles. Welcome back to What's the 4 and one Hello, ladies. Hi. Hello. Yeah, so let us know what's going on in What's the 4 and one TV social media world. Well, this weekend, Lifetime premiered its huge Michelle movie, which is called Surviving Compton, Dre, Shug, and Me. Yes, mm. oh my gosh, I saw that movie. Can we it changed my life. Yeah. I was looking at Dre like, mm. Yeah. Side I heard it was good. I heard it was good. It was like... Tr- Beats by Dre. Listen. Beats by Dre. Yes, basically. If if, if half of that movie was uh, accurate, uh, accurate, boy, he needs... Oh, I felt so horrible. I was like, a shot? Like... Oh, mm, no, you know? seriously, because it was it was so crazy because, you know, we all think of Suge Knight as the one who's like a monster, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he's a... And he was actually sweeter than Dre in the movie. And so you're looking at this like, what? Yeah, yeah. You know, trying to, he's trying to sue. Is he really? Yeah. Why? He can't say that he didn't beat her up, because that's what she said when when um, she was. Uh, I watched an interview, and she mm. said, "Did he say he did not beat me up?" And they were like, "No, no, no." He said that you were not a reliable source, and that people should oh, believe wow. you. Right. No, Sugar is saying that he's going to sue too. He's in jail, yeah. but I don't know I how he's going to do that. But he can't <laughs> yeah, sue your baby mother. She has babies by both those guys. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's the thing about the movie, too. It didn't just make them look bad. Like, she also acknowledged what she did, mm. you know, sleeping with a married man and the mm-hmm. whole thing. And it's, it's a great movie, guys. You need to, like, check it out. Yeah. But watch yeah. Straight Outta Compton first and then watch Surviving Compton because now you, it's just it's two different things, right? Totally mm-hmm. crazy. Yeah. Totally crazy. Mm-mm-mm. All right, cool. Well, you guys definitely need to get up on that. But also, we just wanted to give a huge shout-out to Blessed 19... 19- 1983 Lady and V Burn 7 for commenting on the Michelle A movie post. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, <laughs> and do you guys remember last week when we talked about Rihanna's new hairstyle? Oh, yeah. The yes. faux locks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It looks so good. Mm-hmm. Well, Actress Megan Good. <laughs> Actress Megan Good, she has her own rendition. Hers Ooh. is gold. Ooh, and she's also nice. rocking it with shaved sides. She's a really, really Goldilocks. Goldilocks. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, girl. Yeah, and we want to shout out to the people that commented. Shout out to Ocean Blue Signs, Vape Ace Empire, Funko underscore Pop underscore Photography, Anusera86, and Will Nails for commenting on our post about her. Nice. Thank yeah. you. Also, shout out to RLIAB, which stands for Record Label in a Box. 
Team Amigos, Josie Espa, X Panka, and Breaking Glass Pictures for their comments on Mia's birthday post. Yes. Nice. Mm-hmm. nice. Very nice. And Beyonce and Nicki Minaj were at the title concert Ooh. this past Ooh. weekend. Okay. Kind of rocking similar outfits. Did you see? Like the black lace Beyonce, they both kind of wore that. Yeah, it looked really, really good. But Beyonce's black lace had um, there was there was a story behind it. Mm-hmm. So she had she found this picture of this um, um, African woman mm-hmm. that had all these um, uh, webs on her back from getting beat, mm-hmm. and that's oh, where that's... the beating came from. Oh, yeah, really? I read this whole article I didn't about know it. That. I, didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I'm, I'm guessing like black was the theme of the title concert last mm-hmm. night. It was, she was just like paying homage to her heritage. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Beyonce. Put your two hundred and fifty million dollars. <laughs> King wow. B, King B. <laughs> Speaking of bowing down, Nicki Minaj got to meet her idol last night, Miss wow. Lauren Hill, and she that. paid homage to her by actually bowing, bowing down, down to her, <laughs> which is nice to see. You never yes. get to see artists pay homage to like the legends like Miss Lauren Hill, so it was really, really good. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yes, yes. And um, I want to give a shout out to producer Legend and Instella Me for their comments on that post wow okay yep so so you guys know to keep those comments coming we want to shout you out so don't forget to follow us at what's the 411 tv on twitter facebook and instagram and we might shout you out next time thank you ladies yes keep those comments coming when we return we'll be back with an interview with katrina walker stay tuned Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. (laughs) But when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Pell. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, Drew. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. What's the 411 brings you exciting guests, and today is no different. Today we have Miss Katrina Walker, an outstanding achiever and survivor of domestic, mental, and physical abuse. You're welcome. Miss Walker is an entrepreneur, a philanthropist, and a motivator. She took being a witness to cultural, domestic, and financial turmoil and converted it into what she learned into a motivational tool to fight victimhood. Katrina Walker, welcome to What's the 411. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having welcome. me. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for Thank being you so much here. for having me. So we're going to get started <laughs> right away. So... Your resume and your achievements and everything you have going on is outstanding. It's amazing. And your accomplishments are extremely impressive. impressive. So what was your like biggest adversity that you faced um, when you were building your brand and your empire? The biggest thing that I faced is just the difficulties of always going down and having a no good husband, uh, just mm-hmm. always fighting me and uh, having four small children and, you know, getting to the point that we had nothing, you know, and just seemed like my whole life I was always running, you know, running from him. And, and he would come home whenever he felt like it. Daylight would hit him in the face. And the advice that I was given back then, my mother, you know, she, you know, when I would call her and say, he's not home, she said, Trina, just go back to sleep. You know, he'll be in there with a long lie, you know. And, and I would call the local hospitals and, and I would call the jails. And, you know, and when he came in, he would want to fight me. You know, I'd get beat up, you know, and trying to protect my children from that. and irons being ran past my head or thrown past my head and you know so my my biggest adversity was you know and my biggest thing was to make sure that my children was okay and I love 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 them and to just take you know come up with an, a plan to get out of this mess to move this baggage out of my, my life you know to make a better life you know for my children and for myself so when we became homeless you know oh. i had to figure out a way you know i found myself in a 15 passenger van with two seats in it and my children and him and uh mm-hmm. having to go to people's house and pretend that i'm there you know visiting you know but just not having a place to live you know and um, were you in that relationship I was in that marriage it was a marriage for 20 years I was a teenage I I was a teenage bride Mm -hmm. you know and went right into having children and I stayed because everybody was telling me you know if you leave you're not gonna make it you know it's gonna be hard out there with you you and your Mm -hmm. children you know and that was so far Oh, I, I had just a little bit of college because I went off to Houston when I graduated high school and mm-hmm. he asked me to marry him and I went back, you know, to Memphis and we got married. But right. uh, my education level was good. I, I finally landed a job at Federal Express. Mm-hmm. Federal Express then was a young company. It yeah. was only like, 
10 years old. Mm -hmm. So the owner, Fred Smith, actually would come out. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to work there as a temporary because I was never too good. And I'll never remember that day that they were going to offer jobs to the people that didn't work there. So I was going to take full advantage of it. But two girls were sitting at the table, and I'll never forget because I had small children, and I was just so happy to be working there even as a temporary. So I was going to apply for this job. So I remember the two girls sitting at their employee cafeteria saying, I sure hope she get that job so she can buy her some clothes. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, wow. Ali, you know, I, I always knew, you know, hey, if I I got one dress. I'm going to wash it. I'm going to iron it. I'm going to keep it looking good. But it was about my babies. So when That's I got right. that job, I took full advantage of everything that Fred Smith taught us. When he came out and talked to us and his management staff, and you know what? They would always post jobs. I did get the job. Mm -hmm. They hired yes. 10 people. They interviewed 80, and two were ladies, and one was me. So oh, <laughs> I, I took that, I took that, and I used those tools that he had given me, and I knew that even though they kept posting jobs for us within the company, I didn't want to move up with the company. I kept saying, I don't want to retire here. Right. You know, everything that Fred Smith had talked about, I'm not Fred Smith. I mean, I get the planes, but I'm going to start my own business. Yes, you're going to be an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. I'm yes. going to start my own you, business. You just said, yes. yes, you can do it. I said, yes, I can do it, and that's what I did. You know, I came up with a plan, and I ended up divorcing their father, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I started my own daycare center. I first started a modeling and finishing. I wanted to teach little girls how to be young ladies, how to mm -hmm. sit, how to stand, how yes. to walk, and how to talk. Mm -hmm. And from there, people knew that I had three daughters of my own. Mm -hmm. I had a son, but I had three girls, and they knew that I was a great mother. Right. So they wanted to bring their children to me. Mm -hmm. So I decided to start a daycare, and I stepped outside the box. I wanted to make it even bigger. I said, what I'm going to do is make it 24 hours, because there's no 24 That's hours. That's game-changing. That's yes. really yeah. Yeah. That helps I'm a lot of women, you know, who work nights so, and all that. That's yes, so that's what I and did. This is in Memphis. In Memphis. I okay. did a 24 hour daycare because, in my mind, I said, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to target the Federal Express employees. So we have a hub facility there. That's where all the packages come in and they're sorted. So everybody, all mamas and daddies, I said, they don't work from just nine to five or six to six. I said, we're going to roll them in and roll them out. I said, I'm going to give them the best quality service. They'll never have to worry about their babies. I said, food is going to be home cooked from scratch. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, I'm going to have. Certified teachers there, educators there, mm -hmm, right. you know, so the daycare, before I knew it, you know what? I had a waiting list. I had children wow. you know, everywhere. I couldn't even take any more children. And from there, I decided to build a building. Right. So, wow. you know, it just kept growing. And you know what? When I first started, I said, I'm going to set myself a goal. I'm going to make my first $5,000. Mm -hmm. That $5,000 was $20,000. Right. Wow. And, and then oh when, God. you know, I just kept going up and up and up, you know, and I just couldn't hardly believe it. So when my accountant did my taxes, when I made three point some million dollars, I'm like, whoa. Yes. And, you know, and it was just like, just, I mean, it was Things just start changing, you know, it starts changing and everything that, you know, people were telling me that you're not going to make it, you're not going to survive. And I just didn't let any obstacles, you know, uh, me being a woman, that wasn't going to stop me. Mm -hmm. uh, the color of my skin, it wasn't going to stop me, you know, mm -hmm. me having four children. And I just said, you know what? You know, I'm going to do this. And I did it. I did it. And I thank God every day, you know, that I was able to go in there and um, make a change and make a better life for me and my children. So what would your advice be for women in a similar situation, maybe struggling in an abusive relationship, don't know how to get out of it, don't know how to pursue their dreams? What would be your advice to them? My advice is not to stay like I did because I'll never be 18, 19, or 20 again, you know? Mm -hmm. I won't get those years back. I will never get but those years what back. Done with these yeah. years. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I, that's what I say, you know, <laughs> even as bad of a situation, but what I say to them, don't stay because like I say, that iron, I can remember him kicking that door in and me always running and me trying to throw my children. I threw them up on the top bunk bed. I had two at the time. Uh, my son, I threw him on the top bunk bed and threw my daughter on the top bunk bed and I got on the bottom bunk bed and he kicked the door in. And, and when he kicked that door in, my little boy, he was like four years old, but he says, Mama, duck! You know, yeah. and the iron went through the wall. So, you know, I wouldn't want anybody to stay because of the simple fact, I know that I wouldn't be here. I didn't mm -hmm. weigh but a hundred and something pounds then. I was very little and very petite. And even if I wasn't an iron, what? Yeah. Let, you know, so, exactly. you know, I would say don't stay, you know, don't stay. Not if, if violence, physical or mental, because mental would chip away at your brain. Yes. Eventually, you're not going to be any good for anybody, you know, and you want your mind. You don't want to lose your mind. Right. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you have so many 
like wonderful oh, accolades no. and you're like such Thank an inspiration you. and Thank you. you know I'm sure that your story will help so many women you know and you know men and you know just children that have um, you know experienced growing up in, in the home with um, domestic violence great thank well you. thank you for coming and hanging out with us here at what's the 411 <laughs> thank you it was, it was very enlightening and um, you know we're going to take some of that wisdom and that knowledge yes. and yes. 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 you know apply it to our everyday life you've got the motivation Vente mi gente, vente mi gente Es tiempo de escoger un presidente Voten mi gente, voten mi gente Alce la mano y diga presente Vente mi gente, vente mi gente No deje que este país no nos cuente Voten mi gente, voten mi gente El 8 de noviembre pa'l frente A thought of the week comes from Denise Hurley via Brian Tracy, and I quote, Never say anything about yourself you don't want to come true. If you want your motivational thought to appear on What's the 411 Start of the Week, just hit us up on our What's the 411 TV Facebook page, and you might just get selected. Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. Hey, going out like that? Yeah, why? Well, <laughs> What would the neighbors think? <laughs> I see you! Come look at Mr. Feather! Look what I have. Mr. Bird, remember? Bark, bark, bark. We're just playing! We're just playing! I'm trying to get you out of here! Even still. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of teens in foster care who don't need perfection. They need you. Being a dad can be tough. No, no, no. What do you mean she's not coming? When's the fairy princess coming? Any minute now. <laughs> but when you're willing to do anything... It is I, Cruz, Zinc or Bell. Yeah. Okay, time for cake. It's always worth it. I know it's really you, bro. I'm just pretending for the other kids. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Call 877-4-DAD-411 or visit fatherhood.gov. Well, that does it for this week's edition of West of 4 and 1, your smart source for urban, lifestyle, and entertainment news. And until next week, check out our website, www.whatstof411.com. And remember to hit us up on Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, and Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, What's the 411 TV. Yes, please check us out, and we just might mention you on the show. I'm Kizzy Cox, and on behalf of Anika McLean and Courtney Rashawn, thank you for watching What's the 411, and we will see you next time. <laughs>